Welcome to SkillCap Starter Course for Preservation of Ochre in Dragonflight. This video will guide you through everything you need to know for setting up your character in the new expansion. We'll start by giving you an introduction to Evoker while explaining how preservation is played in PvP. After this, we'll be providing you with a core talent build that you can safely copy, but also giving you some alternative builds if you want to experiment. We'll do the same for PvP talents. Then we'll give you your stat priority and show you how to gear, as well as how to gym and enchant. And finally, we'll give you the macros you need for Arena in Dragonflight. And while this guy does a great job of getting you started, you're missing out big time if you're not already a member over at our platform, Skillcapped. We work with the absolute best players possible to give you all the information you need to gain a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Dragonflight. We worked with Clyde, a multi-rank 1 healer and winner of the 2022 Solo Shuffle Tournament. Clyde is widely considered one of the best healers in Europe and was one of the pioneers for Evoker on the beta. The Preservation of Ochre Healing Course is designed to walk you step by step through this new class, showing you how to make the most out of your unique healing toolkit and how to properly use each of your cooldowns just like a pro. It didn't stop there though, as we even developed videos for our new Master in Minutes series that teach you some advanced tricks that you won't find anywhere else. So if you want to know how to dispel yourself out of CC as an evoker or how to correctly manage interrupts, then you need to check out our binge-worthy courses. This, alongside our comprehensive crowd control and survival guides, it's a no-brainer to join Skillcat this expansion if you want to be light years ahead of everyone else who doesn't have access to our courses. We're also super excited to announce our brand new article site for Dragonflight where you can find a written version of this guide. In the article, we've conveniently provided the export link for you to import the talent build we cover in this guide. We also have all the macros listed for you to easily copy and create in-game. We'll be keeping the article updated throughout the expansion with the most recent talents and everything else that the best players in the world are using. So be sure to visit the link in the description, bookmark it, and check back often to keep yourself up to date with the most recent build. Alright, let's get back to the video. Kicking things off, let's go over a brief introduction to Preservation Evoker. The class as a whole introduces two new mechanics. The first is a resource system called Essence, which is similar to DK runes and is required to use certain spells. The second is the Empower mechanic, which is tied into a few abilities. Empowered spells change their effects or strength depending on how long they're cast. Evokers are also quite mobile, having a core ability called Hover, which allows them to cast while moving, and even some spells that allow them to change the position of their partners. Overall though, Evoker mechanics are incredibly unique, and despite having a learning curve initially, their playstyle should eventually make sense for any experienced healer. And speaking of which, what is their playstyle actually like in Arena? A lot of it hinges on an ability called Echo, which can be applied to multiple targets and duplicates other heals when pressed. Most of an Evoker's heals are actually gated behind cooldowns or resource requirements, which might make them seem bad superficially until you realize how many cooldowns they actually have. Their wide array of defensives is meant to supplement their lack of healing throughput outside of their normal healing rotation. This means, in order to learn Preservation Evoker in PvP, you need to be able to recognize how and when to trade individual defensives, which is something we cover extensively in our Burst Healing Guide. At this point, we would normally go into the best race for Evoker, but there's only one option, so if you manage to somehow screw this up, well... Congratulations on doing the impossible. Anyway, now let's talk about the talents, which might seem a bit confusing after the revamp to the talent system in Dragonflight. We'll start by giving you what we're calling your core build before adding on your optional talents, both in the Evoker and Preservation Trees. We'll begin with the core Evoker talents. The core build includes talents that are good for a wide array of situations. It's meant to be multi-purpose, and if you were teleported into any random arena game, having these talents would give you the most flexibility. Here, you'll want to always pick up every talent we've highlighted in green. At the top of the tree, you can choose between a shorter cooldown on one of your racial abilities. We've chosen the shorter cooldown on Wing Buffet, since it has a knockback which generally has more value in Arena, especially on maps with a Z-axis. You should also avoid playing without Quell, 
since one of your main weaknesses as an evoker is getting CC'd. So having a ranged interrupt is vital. The same is true for Sleepwalk. This is one of your few CC spells, and it's important for any form of team play, even solo shuffle. Tip the Scales is another must pick since it's one of your main cooldowns. It makes your next empowered spell instant, which has both offensive and defensive uses. Again, a huge part of evoker healing is supplementing your standard healing rotation with cooldowns, and Tip the Scales is crucial for this. And to round out our noteworthy talents, we actually have a pair of them with Rescue and Twin Guardian. Rescue is the evoker equivalent to Life Grip, and with Twin Guardian, it even applies a shield to you and the player it's used on. It also has some unique properties that we cover in a Healing Master in Minutes video. In addition to the talents selected in green, you can also choose from any of the talents we've highlighted in red. At the top of the tree, we have a talent that makes Disintegrate channel faster, which leads to Forger of Mountains, reducing the cooldown on our route and making it less likely to break on damage. While these are technically optional, we highly recommend them, especially if you don't have many route effects on your team. On the right side of the tree, we have Scarlet Adaptation. This is a more aggressive choice, since it allows you to contribute more with damage, this talent becomes more valuable once you have your four piece, which can proc instant cast living flames. Further down the tree, we have Draconic Legacy, which we can put two points into. But if we're at all worried about being a kill target, then we'll get much more value budgeting one of these points into either of the renewing blaze modifiers, with Foci of Life being stronger into burstier compositions. Finally, we have some optional mobility talents, including Exuberance for more passive movement speed and Tailwind for burstier movement speed during hover. Either one of these are good, but definitely not needed. The other talents we just covered have more consistent value in most arena games. Next, let's look at the core build of your preservation tree. Again, you'll want to pick every talent we've highlighted in green, with the most noteworthy picks being the choice between Empath and Spiritual Clarity. We select Empath since it gives us insane essence regeneration after using Spirit Bloom, which is a spell we generally don't use that often, making the reduced cooldown less valuable. Then for the Emerald Communion talents, we've gone with Dreamwalker, which allows us to cast it while moving. Emerald Communion is already strong enough, so the added HP from the alternate talent might be a bit overkill in some matchups. Moving on though, we have our choice between Time Dilation Talents. This ability is one of our main defensive cooldowns, and with a 1 minute cooldown, it's already pretty efficient. Increasing its damage mitigation with Delay Harm just makes it more consistent. With that said, we could swap it for Just In Time in very specific cases, like in matchups where there's a constant stream of incoming damage, like against dot-based wizard cleaves, or even into demon hunters or unholy death knights, since their consistent damage is quite high. Throughout the tree, there are some talents which you definitely don't want to play without, including Golden Hour. This just adds a small burst heal to Reversion, which is one of our primary healing over time effects. This burst heal scales depending on damage taken, which is quite useful into damage spikes. This is also why Punctuality is a must pick, since it adds an additional charge to Reversion, adding to the value of Golden Hour. A huge part of your sustained healing depends on maximizing your Reversion healing with Echo, so even though talents like this seem boring, they're crucial for your HPS. Moving on, the only in-cap talent that's 100% necessary is Stasis. This is without a doubt one of the highest skill cap abilities. It copies three helpful spells and then stores them later to be unleashed in one global. It's a very complicated ability, and when used properly, it feels like cheating. We have an entire video on this topic in a Healing Master in Minutes video. With that said, let's cover your optional talents, which we've highlighted in red. What you should immediately notice is that we only have two options, so let's break it down. Dream Flight should be your go-to pick against any team with consistent setups, which usually means teams with rogues, mages, or hunters. This is because Dream Flight and Deep Breath both make you immune to crowd control while mid-air, allowing you to potentially avoid some CC. Otherwise, you can put this remaining point into Energy Loop. This will be stronger in any long matchup, since it gives you a way to actively regenerate mana. 
In any case, this is what we recommend as a general core talent build. If you want to be ultra competitive, this will suit you just fine, but you could certainly experiment here and there with alternative talents. Next, let's take a look at what your best PvP talents are. From the options available, there are two that you'll want to choose almost every game, the first being Dream Projection. This is a highly unique ability that acts as a proactive defensive cooldown. It'll allow you to fly a drone into your teammates, burst healing them, and then leaving a huge hot once it expires. Nullifying Shroud is the second PvP talent you'll pick. It's like a holy ward on steroids, providing immunity to three CC effects in a row. The only downside to this ability is that it can be dispelled, or even worse, spell stolen, which is why you might want to drop it against arcane mages. From here on, you have a few options. Obsidian Metal is a relatively neutral pick since it simply gives you an aura mastery with your obsidian scales, which you actually have two charges of thanks to obsidian bulwark. Time Stop is another neutral pick. This is like an instant cast cyclone that you can only use on friendly targets, including yourself. You could use this to stop massive damage waves on your teammates, or even on yourself to avoid CC. It's one of those cooldowns that has a fairly balanced risk to reward ratio. Scouring Flame is a more aggressive option, giving you the ability to AoE dispel multiple enemy buffs. This is particularly strong into Restoration Druids and other Preservation Evokers for dispelling HOTs. Unburdened Flight is more situationally useful and is strong into any team with multiple snares, especially when you could be the kill target. The remaining choices are fairly niche. If you really want to experiment in Arena, you could play with Chrono Loop. This allows you to lock enemy players at low HP and counteract any healing. This can be risky, which means its mileage may vary. Swoop Up is another situational PvP talent that could be useful in arenas but might be more valuable in RBGs. It allows you to grip an enemy player, which can be useful for setting up knocks on certain maps. Next up, we're going to be covering gear, but before we do, if you want to see the rest of our class course, it's only available at skillcap.com. There, you can access our premium damage rotation and bursting guides, alongside our defensive play and crowd control courses which were designed by some of the best WoW players in the world. And if that wasn't enough, we even offer site-exclusive arena commentaries where you can get detailed matchup strategies to start playing just like a pro. And with a rating gain guarantee, you have nothing to lose, so check out skillcap.com today. Now we'll get into your stat priority and how you should be gearing. Starting with your stat priority, you'll want to focus on getting as much versatility as you can, ideally at least 30% inside of Arena. This will happen automatically through PvP gearing as you'll be using items which mostly have versatility on them. At this point, we recommend a balance of both Mastery and Haste. Your Mastery simply gives you more healing on targets that are on a lower HP percentage than you, while your Haste reduces your GCD, increases your cast speed, and also reduces the cooldown of both Reversion and Verdant Embrace, which are both crucial for your sustained healing. This of course means that Critical Strike is your worst stat and should be avoided. And while you can initially gear up through multiple sources, you'll eventually land on a full set of 424 Conquest gear. The only exception will be the use of one crafted item, which are boots that reduce incoming CC by 5% which you'll absolutely need to use. You'll also have the option of converting Conquest PvP gear into tier pieces, which is something we highly recommend for the four set bonus. This will give you instant living flame procs, which is amazing for smoothing out your healing rotation. As for trinkets, there's only a few options, with Medallion being 100% mandatory, no exceptions. For your second trinket slot, Insignia should be your default pick in most matchups. But you could play with Emblem in situations where you could be the kill target, since it offers an additional defensive cooldown. Moving into Gems and Enchants, this one's pretty straightforward. Since versatility is your best secondary stat, you'll ideally look to both Gem and Enchant this until you reach 30% versatility inside of Arena. But as we discussed before, you should customize your build according to taste, stacking Mastery for more overall healing or Haste for more consistency with your rotation. Since secondary stats will have diminishing returns above 30%, this incentivizes balancing both Mastery and Haste 
once you've reached the 30% threshold with versatility. This means your ring enchants can help flatten out any voids in your itemization. Versatility, Mastery, and Haste enchants are all valuable, so use them to get versatility to 30% if needed and then balance between Mastery and Haste if not. Next, there's a handful of speed enchants you can get on your bracers, cloak, and boots. Although you do have the choice of getting a stamina enchant on boots if you prefer the very minor increase to your survivability. For your chest, you can choose between a larger mana pool or better overall stats. The choice here is pretty flexible, and both are good. Reserve of Intellect is arguably the safer choice since evokers can have mana issues in longer matchups. For legs, there's two similar options, both Temporal and Frozen Spell Thread. Again, there are situational advantages to each of them, but Temporal is likely overall better for most arena games if you don't want to run into mana issues. As for your weapon, the Sophic Devotion Enchant is best since it provides you with a proc-based increase to intellect, which is always valuable, no matter what the context. To wrap things up, let's go over some macros you'll find useful in PvP. First off, you should highly consider making Dispel macros for Party 1, Party 2, and for yourself. This will allow you to react faster to important debuffs without needing to swap targets. Secondly, You'll definitely need two separate Tip the Scales macros, one for Spirit Bloom, which is what you'll use most often, and one for Dream Breath, which you should have as a backup in case you need to quickly heal while Spirit Bloom is on cooldown. You can also make a macro to Tip the Scales Fire Breath, which is quite risky, but can be worth it in fast-paced games, especially if you're playing a damage-centric build. Next, you will want kick macros for Arena 123. Since your interrupt is ranged, you can usually kick any player at any time, making this a nice way to increase your efficiency and speed with a highly reactive spell. You should also do the same for your sleepwalk, having a separate bind for Arena 1, 2, and 3. Next up, you might want to consider using some cursor macros, both for rescue and for deep breath or dream breath. This will allow you to use these abilities faster by skipping the requirement to click on the ground when they're used. This saves you a small amount of time and isn't 100% necessary, but definitely worth it if you want to optimize your gameplay. All right, guys, that's it for this one. As a reminder, don't forget to visit and bookmark the written version of this guide linked in the description that we'll be keeping updated throughout the expansion over on our brand new article site. And if you're looking to gain a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Dragonflight, Head over to skillcap.com right now and check out our premium courses risk-free. That's right, we're the only service that dares to literally guarantee at least 400 rating while actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.